So we, we get these kind of questions uh, often from our viewers, uh, and they question a lot of things about COVID. And one of them that seems to be kind of catching everyone uh, in a swell right now is, is this false positive. And the idea that somebody or two people test symptoms, one can test positive, the other can test negative, or you get a negative, negative, then a positive, or vice versa, where you get a positive and then a negative shortly thereafter. So my question to you is that the testing capabilities at St. Luke's, what are we looking at when it comes to, to false positive? What rate is it? We, we don't, well, I guess it depends on what you mean by false positive. If you are, because that can mean different things. Does that mean that somebody has okay. a negative test today and then they get a different test in a week and, and it's, a, it's a totally different type of test and one's negative and one's positive? Or do we mean that it's uh, somebody gets a test that is positive, but it turns out that they didn't have the right set of symptoms? Yeah, I guess the term gets thrown around a lot, doesn't it? Like, it's not like cut and dry. So the, the, the challenge with false positives is that it means different things. Um, we don't have, at this point, a definitive test or a gold standard test for COVID. So most of the time when the term false positive is used, it means that you get a test today that's positive, and then the really good test that gets done in a few days, which is a different test, is negative. And they say, you know what? That positive result you got first was wrong. That's, that's, that's probably the most common use of the, the term false positive. Um, and the trouble in COVID is we don't have that second really good, really handy definitive test. All we have is, well, two tests. Um, the one test that is probably most commonly gotten right now that we're running at St. Luke's is the RNA test where they swab your nose or the back of your throat or really deep in the back of your nose and they, and they test to see if there is RNA present that is consistent with COVID. That's, that's the most commonly done test. The other test that's done in other locations is they draw a blood test and they see if there's evidence of a certain type of antibody against COVID. But both of these are new enough that we don't know how sensitive and specific and, and accurate they are because we don't have a gold standard okay. test. So that's, that's one of our challenges right now is we don't have a comparison test that we can run in the background and, and check the antibodies or check the RNA against. So who does have this gold standard test or isn't one? I don't think there is one currently. That's the challenge is the, the screening tests that we're running right now include either RNA out of your nose, let's say, or antibodies out of your blood. But there isn't a test that's run in the background later to check the accuracy of the first test. Um, we are new enough with this disease that we, we don't have a gold standard test. So let, let's draw another example or, or, or give you another example that might help. Let's say you think you have strep throat and you go and you see your doctor and they do a, a throat swab and they say, hey, um, you, you, you have good symptoms that suggest strep, but your test is negative. So we're not going to treat you for strep right now, but let's do this background strep culture just to be sure, because there's, I don't know, a 10% chance that this first test was wrong. And then two days later, they call and they say, hey, uh, you actually have strep. Uh, we, we should treat you now. So that first test is a false negative, but it was checked with a second test. That, that, that's, that's what we don't have here is, is the, the check test or the, the more definitive test. The, the test that we're doing most commonly is this RNA test out of your nose where we're checking to see if you have RNA. You can get a false positive in that setting, let's say I, I get sick now and a month from now, I decide to, to get tested to see if I have it still with RNA in my nose. It's possible that I would still be positive. And that's another meaning of false positive where I don't have symptoms anymore, but I have RNA in my nose. So that, and that's a way that false positive can happen now if you get tested after your symptoms have cleared but you still have RNA in your nose. 
Wow. Okay. Well, I want to then ask Sorry. about this. So you mentioned uh, that 10%, like on the strep thing, that I guess what would be the standard by which testing would fall into a category? 10% are, are, are false and that's good, or is it like less than that? You know, the, the, the ideal test has a very low rate of false negative and false positive, where the, if, you, if you show up as positive, then, then we know that that's accurate and we're not worried about the fact that it's a falsely positive test. Um, that rate uh, ideally is probably between 1% and 10%. It, it depends on the disease involved, how much we're willing to tolerate uh, as far as inaccurate results. Um, right now we're doing the best we can with what testing we have available, which is uh, admittedly imperfect because we're still pretty early on. Would you have any idea what that false positive or false negative rate would be right now for COVID tests? No, no, I, I, I don't have those rates currently. I, I've asked for them. Uh, I, I don't think that, that we uh, have them calculated out well right now for the, the reasons that I mentioned. We don't really have a definitive test that we're checking these against. Okay, that makes sense. That's all I need to know, I think, unless there's anything I'm missing or that I forgot to ask you. No, just have everybody wash their hands, wear your masks. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Bramwell. I really appreciate it. You're welcome.